a brand new vlog. Today I'm going to be walking you through a day in my life as an agency owner. Now, I haven't been posting for a while. This is not going to be the typical uh, day in, in my life as an agency owner. Most, most days are going to be a bit more boring. Uh, so I want to set the realistic expectations. Currently I'm in Dubai. I'm taking a two, you know, I'm, I'm actually taking two weeks um, on and off at work. You know, I just got done one of the biggest projects I've ever worked on. Probably, you know, by far the biggest project I've ever worked on. It pushed me to my limits, to my boundaries. Um, and I told myself, once I'm done with this project, which I'm really, really excited to share with you guys in the upcoming videos, um, you guys are going to love it. But I told myself, once I'm done with this project, I'm going to take a vacation with my girl. I was actually filming this, and we're going to go to Dubai. We're going to, we're going to go enjoy, uh, enjoy ourselves and really take some time off, relax, because um, it was a really, really hectic, uh, stressful, really rewarding as well, a couple of weeks um, working on this project. It took me for it took me around three months in total. Um, so very excited to share that with you, but I'm gonna walk you through um, my day currently in Dubai, um, how, how, how I structure my day for maximum productivity, um, how I think about work when I'm off technically, um, and how I structure my day for you know, for actually enjoying myself as well, right? Because if you go on vacation, but you're still in that in that work mode, you're not gonna come back recharged. And that is my number one objective, to come back to Madrid, to my hub, and uh, recharge and really ready to go again, right? Uh, now, a few things on the agenda today. We've got a strategy session with an existing client. We've got a call with my mentees. Uh, we've also got a, 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 an onboarding for a new client, which I'm very excited to, uh, to share with you guys uh, how that whole thing came about. Um, we've also got some shooting for possibly, right? It may, go, it may get uh, cancelled because uh, this guy uh, is pretty busy and running around. But uh, we do have a, uh, a session with uh, a recording session with one of our, our clients for the agency. Um, we're gonna basically we're gonna shoot for, uh, some ads for for him for the webinar funnel that we built um, a few um, a few uh, weeks ago. So we're gonna shoot. Uh, gonna, uh, we're gonna tell him what those ads should look like. We're gonna shoot them with him um, and you know get that locked in and. For actually enjoying ourselves, we've got a massage, we've got a dinner, and then a few things here and there. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. But if we come through, I just I just want to show you guys what the uh, the current setup looks like. Basically, what I'm trying to do, uh, how I structure my days, is I try to wake up early, especially because the Dubai heat is quite intense. So I wake up early, I sit here uh, with the views to the sea, and we've got some incredible views. Um, and um, you know, if you guys have watched any of my content, if you guys have watched my, uh, especially my house tour, I talked about how important for me at least is to, to wake up uh, and be inspired, right? And that could be through views, that could be through the work that you're currently putting in, but views definitely helps. And creating an ecosystem where you, you feel inspired and, and you feel motivated to get the work done is really important for you, right? And so when I sit here, I look at the views, I get my, my work done maybe an hour, two hours, uh, my morning work block, deep focus work, then I'm ready for uh, the tackle of the day. So, what I'm going to do right now, because a lot of people have been asking uh, on Instagram all that stuff, is we've got a bunch of rooms. It's not a huge villa, but uh, we've got a bunch of rooms. I want to show you guys through the house room tour. And so if we come through here, we've got the main living, chilling uh, spot. We've got her and his. Uh, but if we come through here as well, we've got the kitchen. We never use that, except for some pretty banger chamomile and peppermint teas after dinner. Um, then we've got a little bathroom here. We've got a laundry room that's not necessary, but then we've got this room that doesn't really, I mean, this is my bathroom actually, we, we have his and hers. Um, then we've got this room. It has a very specific purpose and it is not sleeping. Uh, I'll just leave that, I'll just leave that there, but this room has access to the terrace as well. Um, and then if we come through here, then we've got the main room. So we've got the kind of like the dresser area. We've got her bathroom. If you guys have, if you guys have a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is, uh, strongly recommend you get his and hers. Very, very key uh, for both, by the way. We've got the main uh, bed, uh, uh, main bedroom, um, and that's pretty much for the room slash kind of like living space um, um, area. What I'm gonna do now, I'm always running late for the strategy session with one of my existing clients, so I'm gonna jump on that call, hopefully give you guys a, um, a little screen recording of the call, um, and give you a little debrief of that call, maybe a few um, a few value, you know, a few uh, value uh, bombs, or, or a, thing, a few things that, you know, a few things that, that we covered on that call. So let's go ahead and cut to that. 
for the flows, um, I'll just walk you. I'll just walk you through them. So, um, and again, I'll I'll, I'll share this with you uh, via email, as you mentioned. Uh, but I actually added a few more than we talked about. So uh, we've got po uh, post purchase, and then we've got uh, customer win back, customer thank you, and browse abandonment uh, that are ready for launch. Um, I added a few for for each flow. I added a few um, a few coupons uh, as you. You guys will see, for example, for the so just got done with that strategy session with uh, with one of our uh, clients at the agency. A few things that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, basically, this is what I call a strategy session. Okay? And one of the things that I've been doing, not for every client, but I found I found it to be incredibly helpful for the client specifically. Um, I've been taking more of the kind of consultant strategy um, role at the at the agency. So what we do is basically my lead media buyer and as well as my, my CTO is actually my brother. You guys may have uh, met him in the house too, but basically they jump and, and maybe uh, you know another media buyer that we've got, depending on, on what media buyer handles the account for that client, they jump on a performance call with the client. Right? And those will take place maybe twice a month, once a month, depending on, on how long we've kept that client for. Um, you know, the reason why I say that is because in the first few months with that with the client, you've got to have more communication, right? But once things are, are going very smooth, you can really decrease that. Anyways, those goals are more performance driven, right? So those, you know, they, they'll walk the client through all performance um, uh, metrics. We do have our automated reporting ecosystems and the client has access to that on a daily basis, right? They're all, you know, automatically updated, but they do value that face-to-face -face interaction, right? So those performance goals are with the media buyer, with the CTO, right? And what I've been doing to kind of delegate more and free up more of my time is I've been letting them have those calls because I found myself to, you know, kind of just, you know, I, I'm so confident in my, in my media buyers and my CTO and my team members in general that I've been letting them have the, you know, have the lead role in those calls. And you know, I just found myself not really adding as much value as I could, right? Um, because those were mainly performance driven um, calls. So what I've been doing instead is I've been uh, penciling in and I'm really uh, setting, um, setting in place a structure uh, called the strategy session. And so those strategy sessions are basically calls with just the client and myself. And basically what I'll do is I'll walk the client through the strategy going forward. And I tell them it's quite important not, not to just look at the day-to-day -day, um, activities because then you get stuck in the trenches, right? It's really important to have that 30,000 feet view so you know where you're heading right? and, and you can uh, prep for that. And you can have some sort of contingency planning as well, right? Uh, we can prep, you know, future launches, the, the strategy, et cetera, et cetera, right? So those are the goals that I've been focusing on, mainly the strategy, mainly coming out kind of like a, a consulting session with them uh, and doing those once, twice a month uh, with the clients. And so that's an example of uh, of, the, uh, of this call right here. A few things that we talked about, for example, were the uh, email marketing, Klaviyo flows, uh, some of the, the, the flows that we're going to be putting together for them. Uh, they really appreciated that and they really appreciate our kind of our, our 360 uh, philosophy at the agency. Not just looking at e-commerce growth from a, uh, a paid ads, Facebook ad lens, but looking at the whole ecosystem, right? And so that's a kind of a, a little debrief. Uh, I won't stretch it out for too long. Um, we also uh, put together a, a new uh, communication ecosystem because this is a, a big client. They have a lot of management um, and be, be, basically they told me that the, the president wanted to see a few things. Um, so I told them, Hey, why don't we actually, you know, why don't you tell me the, the things that the president wants to see and we'll add them into our um, communication uh, system so that when we send it over to you, you can literally just forward that to the, uh, the president. Uh, so really tailoring the communication for them. But that is a little debrief of the strategy session. Um, now I'm going to jump on a call with my mentees. Very excited for that call. Honestly, that is one of the calls. Um, probably, you know, the, the call that I, I most uh, look forward to. Uh, simply because I love you know uh, um, connecting with them, answering their questions, uh, and really diving deep, in, and, and really keeps me on, on my on my toes as, as an agency owner. So very excited for that, and uh, we'll jump straight into that right now. Hey, how's it going, brother? Good, good, good. How are first you doing? First of all, I adore you, man. <laughs> I mean, I my first demo call has been upsold to the strategy session, and this was my first ever call with a, such a big brand. Yeah. I'm very fucking happy with you, man. Uh, for you, sorry. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, so how how did it go, man? How how was the? Crazy, did you feel uh, I was comfortable? Shivering, man. I was literally shivering, but I, that's that was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. It, it really works. With my this was this was the first ever meeting with such a big brand. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's all for now. Thanks. All right. We'll speak soon, man. Uh
uh, best of luck and then yes, let yeah. us know how, how it goes. If, if you want to post a little debrief of your, of your demo call on the community, I think that would be valuable to, uh, to a lot of people and say yeah. what, what, um, what, is, you know, what, what, what has seemed to work uh, for you and, uh, from, from mass class and all that stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. I will right, do See you soon. Bye-bye. So that is a wrap on uh, the bi-weekly. Well, I will say it wrong. Uh, basically, twice a week, I've got a call with my mentees on top of the content on top of all that stuff, which uh, I'll probably share with you uh, in the upcoming videos what that whole thing is about. Um, but if you want to learn more about it, there's a link uh, in the description. Anyways, what we talked about in the... Uh, we talked about a bunch of things. Uh, it, was, it almost went for around an hour and a half, almost two hours. Uh, and there were a few questions quite a lot of questions regarding demo calls and strategy sessions um, now for us for you know for my mentees and myself and the way we've structured and i won't talk too much about it because i, I could talk about it for hours and then and i do in the program but um you know the, the way we structure the sales funnel is we don't just drive people to a discovery call right straight away uh, we, we understand that there has to be a uh, longer sales funnel depending on and a specific sales funnel depending on the person you're speaking to whether they're a ceo or cmo depending on the size of company that you're, you're approaching etc etc okay and depending on the size of company they will get a different sales funnel so there is a specific sales funnel which requires a demo call now demo call is around 15, 20 minutes, and there's a very specific uh, structure that we have. For example, we've got an audit uh, analysis and comparison, right? We've got a, um, a set of proven strategies. And finally, we've got a, uh, you know, a little freebie, et cetera, et cetera. I, I won't talk too much about it, but essentially, one of the questions that I got is in this demo call, right? For example, one, one of my students, um, the way, you know, he, he was getting a lot of demo calls booked, but for example, for, for a very specific one, um, the client, you know, the, the, the client basically said, look, we'll, you know, after the demo, right, after the demo call, or actually right in the middle of the demo call, the client said, hey, we'll actually, um, you know, we're looking to implement this in June, so um, so we'll definitely uh, pick uh, the conversation back up, right? And this person actually let them walk. Uh, and I told this person, number one, you should never, you know, regardless of whether it's a demo call or a strategy session, you should never walk, let a, uh, a prospect walk, okay? You should always, always, always get a uh, specific outcome whether it's a uh, no, whether it's a, a yes, whether it's a follow-up call, you need to make sure you have a specific outcome because if it's left up to them, and if it's left up to them to email you back, it'll never happen, right? And this person is, you know, th this prospect, I'm willing to bet, it will probably forget about it, ghost them. Obviously, I told them, um, look, add them to, to your mailing list, add them to your, your profile funnel so they get interactions with you, they get top of mind awareness, but you, you wanna make sure you have um, a specific outcome at the end of the call. So. Uh, what I told them he should have done is on that demo call, regardless of, you know, they should not be making the session. The demo call is just purely to add value. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure you pencil in the strategy session. And what you can do if you have a longer time span uh, until the time that they can actually implement this, lock in that strategy session two weeks, three weeks from now, right? Then go ahead and do a strategy session part one, and then maybe a strategy session part two, so that you have those, you know, those goals uh, throughout that waiting period locked in already, so that when June comes, you're, you're, you've maybe onboarded them seven days before, so you're ready to launch ads right you know, in, in June first. So that's a, a few things that we talked about. The second thing uh, worth, of, uh, worth a, a mention is um, one of my students, basically was, he was coming up against uh, this problem. Uh, he was getting a lot of views on his video um, audits, a lot of great feedback, but uh, he saw that a, a few um, prospects were coming back to him with a, a question, right? And that question was typically, what was your pricing structure? Uh, and um, basically this person, what he was doing is he was then, then follow, you know, answering that, that question, then following up, and then the lead you know, attended to, to basically um, uh, pull through. And what I told this person is, what you should do on those video audits, if you're coming up against an objection after the video audit, is do what I call a, a, a objection prevention. Okay? And what that means is you wanna prevent the objection uh, before it, it actually comes up, right? And so, what you should do in the video audit, if you're seeing that you're getting a lot of questions on the pricing structure or on the, you know, whatever it is, right? You want to make sure that you cover that at the end of the video. You could say, look, any questions regarding pricing structure, any questions regarding communication protocols or um, the actual details of the program will cover on a no obligation, no strings attached strategy session, right? And so you're basically, you're doing objection prevention. You're preventing the objection from coming up and from preventing them from Book, you know, I'm preventing them from booking in a strategy session with you. And that is incredibly effective for not only sales calls, but also for video audits, for anything. Right? You want to make sure that you dissect and you analyze the main objections that you're getting from a, um, a, an outreach, right? And then you actually factor in those objections to your outreach, right? So that you prevent it from coming up. 
So I have to start a few things, a little debrief of the uh, the call with my mentees. There was a lot more stuff that I could um, cover, but I could go on for 30 minutes, an hour, and hear debriefing the, the, the call. But what I'm gonna do right now is um, I'm gonna take a little break. Uh, we're gonna go for a massage, and then I'm gonna jump straight into the uh, onboarding call with uh, one of our, a, a new client of ours. Um, a little uh, debrief on, on this line, a little, um, a bit, bit more information on this line. This line basically is one line, but two brands, right? So this client has given us two brands and I consider it, you know, I think, uh, technically I consider it two clients because completely different brands. One is a CBD brand, um, which I'm very excited for, and the other one is a basically health and wellness brand. So we're gonna get a, we're gonna go get a massage because my girl is, you know, already tired of uh, holding the camera. We're gonna get a massage, uh, relax ourselves, um, have a little, maybe, you know, a uh, smoothie or whatever it is, and then we're gonna come back to the, um, to the room. I'm gonna have this onboarding call, and then we're gonna head off uh, over to, uh, to downtown now. So I'll see you guys there. Um, any questions? Any comments? Uh, excited? Scared? Uh, I'm very bored. Yeah, actually, I figured it out. No, I'm not bored. <laughs> Zero board. I'm actually really excited about this and I really like the way that you have structured the way that your business is because not that I've had that much experience with marketing teams, but I've had experience with a couple of them now. And the transparency I respect because I'm the same way with all of my brands and what I do is everything is very transparent and honest. And I think that that's like the number one thing and way that you should do business. And I feel that that's very much the vibe that I get is that you guys are very open and like it's, it's, yeah. And I also like that you're not trying to, you know, take advantage of every single marketing platform there is like, you know, charge extra for Google, charge extra for YouTube. Like you understand that obviously like your goal is to grow the brand and the more money that we make, the more money you make. And essentially like that means that you have to go in every aspect. And I think that, um, I respect you for that. And I respect your company for that. I think that that's, um, makes you unique, uh, in a lot of ways. So that's awesome. And then, um, yeah, I think that you guys are just great. And I love that. Um, yeah, we just, I just get along with you guys and I think you have great vibe and I like everything that you're about on Instagram too. And so I think this is going to be a fun partnership and it'll be fun to kind of watch everything grow and evolve. And yeah, so I'm excited. So cool went uh, really great. Um, as you guys saw, uh, she was really happy with, uh, our approach when it comes to, uh, our service delivery. So very excited to, you know, very excited to, uh, to get uh, straight into, uh, into the work with these brands. Very excited for the CBD uh, component, uh, for the CBD brand. Um, remember, there's two brands, CBD and a health and wellness brand. CBD, uh, we've done a, a, you know, a, a bit of work uh, here and there with the CBD kind of industry, uh, but really honing in on one brand as a client. Uh, I'm very excited to kind of dominate and, and really get to know that industry a lot better. Uh, get to know how we can bypass those, uh, those regula regulations in on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google, Google as well. Um, we have quite a bit of uh, expertise on, on that already, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident. And uh, the final thing that I wanna say is uh, very, very happy with my CTO and brother, uh, Carlos. Um, basically, he, he went ahead and, and walked them through the uh, email marketing ecosystem, the strategy behind it all. Um, I focus more on the paid ads uh, and the sales funnel uh, side of things on the go. Um, but very, you know, very happy about um, the way he handled that. And the third thing that I wanna talk about is my league media buyer, I wasn't able to jump on the call. Time differences and all that, he's based out in Australia, uh, which is not very convenient, but he's, he's, he's that good, right? Uh, and so um, we went ahead and penciled in a, um, a performance uh, call with, uh, with the lead media buyer and their team to get to know uh, my lead media buyer. Media buyer uh, his name is Aaron, uh, and basically he's gonna walk them through Google Analytics, Google Merchant Center, and a few other uh, touch points uh, that we need to uh, talk about with the client. So um, that is that for a little debrief. So that is that for the onboarding call with uh, these new uh, two clients. And hopefully you guys took a bit of value from the onboarding call. Okay. Okay. Um, hey all right. guys. So we are filming some ads, filming a bit of uh, content as well for one of the clients. Um, yeah, we're about to finish in maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but everything's looking top notch. And uh, let's get it. The event is about to start. We've got some, we've got some princes here. We've got some shakes. It's gonna be lit, it's gonna be lit. <laughs> so, just wrapped it up. That was a pretty intense we uh, recorded. Typically, we don't record content for clients. Keep that in mind. A lot of, a lot of people ask me, like, 
Do you record the content for clients? Like, do you create the content? The answer is no, okay? Now the answer is no, because if you do record content for the ads, it violates time, location, freedom, right? I would have to travel to Dubai to record these ads for the client. Now, I'm, not, I'm never gonna do that. If it does happen, the client is five, 10 minutes, 20 minute drive in a nice car with a nice girl, I am gonna record the ads, right? It was a, a pretty fun experience. Um, they, they were having an event. Um, also met the client uh, face to face. Most of the clients I haven't met face to face, right? And that's one of the great things about social media marketing and, and having a, a marketing agency. I have clients all over the world, and I'm super happy and grateful for that. But I haven't met most of my clients. Like 95, 98% of my clients I haven't met. It was great meet, uh, meeting this this one client. What a what a really chill combo. Like I, I'd already met <laughs> I'd already met him uh, through Zoom and all that. But yeah, really fun experience. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of recording as well, and uh, it was a great combination. So now we're gonna head over to a really cool sky rooftop. Hopefully, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be um, it'll go along, and, and uh, we'll be able to do it. Uh, we're pretty late, um, but I will catch you guys in the next one. All right. So now we're driving over to uh, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but driving over to the uh, the, the, the rooftop. Uh, the Dubai streets roads are some of the most annoying roads I've ever <laughs> driven on, not gonna lie. Uh, we've got cameras pulled over, waste is absolute key, uh, because otherwise you're gonna get sniped. Uh, like, may, may, going, going five kilometers an hour over the, the, um, the speed limit will run you two, three hundred pounds. Uh, so, I'm just hoping we wouldn't get too many of those. Uh, I'm pretty safe while driving, but they're not not very fun roads to drive in. We did go to the mountains and that was a blissful experience because you don't have fucking have a, a lot of uh, speed limits. Doesn't mean I went too crazy but uh, you do hire these cars to uh, at least have a bit of fun. Anyways, I will see you guys uh, in the next clip. So the infinity pool was very very private. Uh, you can't even take out the camera in this place but the views were good, uh, we got that. And now we're heading over back uh, to uh, the room uh, for a place and then we're heading uh, here. And uh, yeah, we'll probably maybe film something at dinner. Um, I'll see you guys later. Back to now, uh, we both have a few stories from the stores and all that uh, you meet uh, during the day. Uh, and for my, you know, I'm picking up a few questions. Also for my core fanatics. Uh, so a few days ago, we had um, had the Lambo. And I must admit, I, I always had this obsession with uh, the road to the sun. It drives very smooth. It's like you're uh, you're driving on a cloud. But for my liking personally, don't really feel the. I mean, here's the thing: this this goes at 250 km an hour. You don't you don't feel a thing. I'm not saying I, I drove at that speed, but at very high speeds you don't feel a thing. And compare that to the Lambo, it's like the complete opposite sensation. Uh, for a Ferrari for a complete opposite sensation. You feel the road, you feel every bump, right? Uh, so it really depends. Now, at my age, I would probably pick a Lambo or a sports car. Probably not a Lambo, just not for my style, but Ferrari 48 or a McLaren even uh, before a new Rolls Royce. If I'm 30, 35, 40, I would pick a Rolls Royce. I think Rolls Royce does give you that. It's more, it's more of a boss, boss in my opinion, right? It's more of a boss car. Uh, Lambo is kind of like, it's fun, right? But if you can draw 400k, 500k on, on a Rolls Royce, you know, for, for this driving sensation, you just do it for the experience and you, you do it because you want to an object. So that's, a, that's a little hunt for my car fanatics. Uh, that's kind of my takes on it. It's really interesting. If you guys can do it, 
And if you love sports cars, I, I would recommend go to you know go to a dealership, like rent it out, like just smell the leather, get yourself in, get yourself in a position, get yourself in a position where you can live out the experience, get it out of the way, and, and then also you know uh, make adjustment. Like maybe you were really obsessed with like a Rolls Royce and you feel it, you feel the driving experience, and it really isn't that, it really isn't all that. Uh, or maybe you do, you drive it and you're completely not, right? So that's my little take. Now we're, uh, we're heading back over to the uh, hotel. Uh, we're gonna get changed, we're gonna have a nice shower. I definitely, I definitely need it. Uh, we've had a, a quite a long day, a pretty intense day for a, a vacation, a vacation day. But I'm not gonna lie, I love the summer days. I love the on and off, I love the, the nice dinners, nice, you know, a massage, you know, a, 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 a really cool balance, so you know. Uh, so, that's kind of my take. Hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. Uh, the, the vlog. Maybe I'll, I'll make some of, uh, I'll make more of these when I get back to uh, Madrid, and uh, maybe I'll shoot some content over at dinner. So. All right, guys. So we are served. Uh, we're gonna dig in. Uh, we've got some incredible views of the Burj. And yeah, we're gonna dig in. If you enjoy the vlog, don't forget to like the video. Go ahead and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I've got so much content coming out on entrepreneurship, social media marketing, agency, digital marketing, and a ton of other cool things. And I'm very excited to share with you the latest project I've been working on that will be coming out in the probably the next video. Uh, so if you don't want to miss out, uh, out on that, go ahead and turn on the bell uh, notifications. And yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed this. I think we had a, a really good mixture of lifestyle uh enjoy some incredible views you know a really good balance of lifestyle and work uh we onboarded a new client we saw some content for uh, an existing client i talked with my mentees uh we also had um, a strategy session with an existing client so hopefully you guys could take a bit of uh, value from that and i will see you in the next video peace